Hello everyone, I wanted to jump on in and do a quick video regarding if I started trading again, what would I do? Now, I've got up a little bit of a initial part here. So as you can see, this is actually me on the left, 2016, um, 168 pounds, seven and a half years later, April 13th, so it's just taken on the weekend, uh, 198 pounds and probably in the best shape that I've been so far. So I wanted to do a quick video on what I would do to shortcut this process because there's been a lot of, um, not bad training as such, but a lot of inefficient training um, and how you can basically shortcut that, that process pretty quickly. So we'll just go on to the next slide, just show you a little bit of a further, you know, progression from where, where I've come. Um, so you can see here those those initial six years is probably the the training that I'm talking about where not necessarily bad training you can see I've made some progress um, but in in total between the last sort of one and a half years um, although the weight stayed the same that's probably an additional you know seven to ten pounds of muscle again. Um, and so how can we get that last stage that I've done in one and a half years uh, and maybe shortcut that, shortcut that so that you can get that sort of initial stage. Maybe you're at that 160, 168 pounds. We haven't even started working out. How can we shortcut that process to, you know, a level of, of where, well, where I'm at at the moment, but hopefully you can get better, uh, but where I'm at in, in a shorter time than seven and a half years. So I want to go to the first point, which I'm just going to quickly go through it because I feel like it's, you know, it's pretty obvious, but it does make a real difference in terms of consistency. I've broken it down into a few things um, on how consistency can really help you improve in the quick amount of time. Obviously, in those years of training that I had, the, the sort of seven and a half years, I'd say there's probably been about two years in total um, where I haven't worked out, that's been either months off, months away, stuff like that. So obviously taking those those two years out um, is it, going to help that that process. But the next point is is the compounding effect of of consistency. You're going to want to you can see here from if you get one percent better each day, it, it's going to compound on each other. Where you know me personally, just going through cycles of training for for a good five six months. Then maybe not training for two months. Although you haven't lost where you've started, you have to sort of restart the engines and restart that consistency and momentum again. Um, and it also goes down into injury avoidance. So making sure that your training and your technique is at a good level so you're not going to be getting injured as well because injury avoidance is, is probably one of the main things um, to keep consistent for everything. And a little tip bit I would say is structure five days so have at least five days in your week where they're structured to some level okay will that be what i'm going to go through here is is two two to three actual like weight training days two to three cardio days as well two days on the weekend or however you want to structure them you're still going to make really good gains um and, and probably maybe better than what's more widely put out there at the moment in terms of training five to six days a week um you know three to ten sets something like that three sets of ten should i say so we'll go through that as well so the next point which it brings us quite nicely is lower volumes plus higher intensity that initial part where this six years that i was doing lifting here was mainly Three sets of 10, four sets of 12, and that was pretty much it. Five days a week, push, pull, legs, push, pull. Push, pull, legs, push, pull. Five days a week um, in this kind of zone, which I thought was going to be helpful because that's what I read. I found out that through people like Trained by JP, um, during the to a certain extent, but I'll go on to later why, um, you know, it might not be the best for you personally. Start with one set of exercise, and this might sound crazy, but 
the way that we most of our training programs come about is through looking at what the top people do and basically copying that and, and changing the weight. So take a, an IFBB Pro bodybuilder. They might do three sets of 10, four sets of 12, maybe five sets on something. It seems to be common perception that what we should do is actually have a training program that follows that, but will just reduce the weight. If you take that into any other sport, so like marathon running, for instance, you take that same logic. Oh, well, Kipchoge, who ran the marathon in under two hours, well, he does 100 miles a week. So I'm just going to do 100 miles a week, but I'm just going to do it slower. When you take it into that perspective, it seems absolutely crazy that when you're just starting out, you would do three sets. One set per exercise, and that set performed till failure. In this, you know, this is where I got a lot of gains in this one and a half years I'm showing here. Um, I found the best progress doing this workout. One set. You can eke that out for a good six months. Um, and I would structure it in a full body routine. So I would have maybe 10 exercises, one set, just covering each body part, biceps, triceps, chest, shoulders, back, legs, quads, calves. Um, one set, just linearly, linearly progressing that and just eat that out as much as you can. There will come a point where you won't be able to do linear progress with it. And that's why I moved to two sets and then reducing that of exercises. So go to six, six working exercises for two sets. But at the beginning, doing full body that twice a week, you're going to get really good progress, far better than what I've seen from doing three sets, four sets, because it's just too much for your body to recover from. Uh, and also don't think optimally covering all areas. So that's number two. And uh, number three is a little bit of a conditioning for what I put in. So got here a little video of me and my friend Ben sort of doing a conditioning workout. Now I can say that a conditioning workout, you can get away with doing an EMOM, which is every minute on the minute. Um, so every minute you would start a an exercise. So you can do that with, with two exercises, just continually do one exercise for one minute, then change to another size for another minute. You can do an AMRAP. So pick a selection of exercises and go through that as many times as possible. I would say you only need six to 15 minutes, just once a week. What is it going to help with? It's going to increase cardiovascular increase your muscle endurance as well um, and also help fat loss most people want to be strong fit healthy but also you know, relatively lean as well uh, and these workouts are really going to help with that the main thing that i think that this helps with and what really changed my perspective on these types of workouts was the amount of smaller muscles that it works so i've listed some some exercises here, so sandbag work, whether that be sandbag carries, sandbag to shoulder, um, just sandbag lifts in general from the floor, box jumps, farmer's carries, thrusters, devil press, lunges, overhead carries, kettlebell swings. Stuff like this is going to work parts of your body that linear training, so when I talk about linear training, I just mean it in one direction. So that'd be a, you know, a bicep curl, basically strip form stuff. This type of training, the conditioning training, is going to help all those smaller muscles, which is going to in turn help your ability to recover from volume, but also ability to progress your strength in your more strict movements, which is going to help your muscle mass. An easy, a really easy way to just demonstrate this is through this type of work, um, one of the smaller areas that it's going to work is your core. Now, the reason we know 
increasing core strength is going to help everything. The main reason that why powerlifters, um, powerlifters mainly put on a belt is to increase the intra-abdominal pressure, thus the strength of their core. You can put a belt on and lift 10, 20 kilos more in a deadlift, bench press, a squat. Um, in, in pretty much any exercise, you can lift more with a belt. Now, why is that? Obviously, that's because it's increasing what your body feels is the strength of your core. Doing these conditioning workouts are really going to help with, one, your core muscles, but all the little muscles in between, which is going to help increase the strength of, of everything. And leading into that is going to help improve all those lifts exponentially. Okay. You can do core exercises. So uh, in on your workouts as well. So on the full body days, I would recommend doing um, at least a core exercise at the end. Um, the difference is it's just going to be so much more fatiguing in these conditioning workouts and also more life specific. Okay. Think of picking up a sandbag from the floor versus doing a, let's say a, a sit up. Okay. A sandbag off the floor is going to be using your core, your back, your lower back, your glutes, everything, all the little muscles in between and doing something like a sit up. It's not as life specific, I would say. So it's going to have greater carryover into different things. You might have heard of farmer strength, stuff like that. The reason is they're picking up little things all day, every day. They're not doing squats, deadlifts, stuff like that. They're doing little movements each day, which is going to help their overall system, their work capacity improve and just grow stronger over time, which is going to then lead into your strict stuff. You can, if you want to do some Olympic lifting as well, clean and jerks, stuff like that, I would say are really good, but obviously they are quite technical. At the beginning, I wouldn't say they're essential. So I would say, last point, doing a condition workout once a week is going to help. Fourth is doing some form of cardiovascular work. So the main benefit of cardiovascular work is going to help your recovery benefits. Okay, now people think cardiovascular takes away from strength training, but actually... You've got to think that your body is is a, a system of recovery and training in general is a recovery exercise. You can do as much training as you want. If you can't recover, you're not going to grow. So if we can do cardiovascular work, which is going to help our ability for our body to recover, that's going to then in turn improve the ceiling of where we're going to be able to go with our strength training, um, with our physique in general. I would say doing a mix of zone two, so lower heart rate training and high intensity training, which is going to help your VO2 max. Doing something like that twice a week, it is going to be really good. One, to help your fat loss uh, and help how lean you're going to be. But also, like I say, the recovery benefits. And I am you know, a main proponent of, of running, but it doesn't have to be just running. It can be cycling, swimming, sport in general is going to help increase your your base to build on top muscle basically lastly what i would say is main gaining so main gaining this is relating to to food the cycles of fat loss and fat gain um can basically lead to either a same outcome as if you just main gained or a worse outcome most of the time that you'll be gaining you know weight and fat um your body composition is gonna gonna decrease which for some people they might not care about for some people that want to look good year round then obviously it's gonna have a detrimental impact but your strength will probably increase until the time where you want to lose that fat you're then going to go into a period where your lifts are going to be decreasing and you're going to be reducing that fat so I would say it makes out to better just to keep increasing, just main gaining, should I say? Just keep going through that motion. You're going to have better co body composition year round. It's also going to help your cardiovascular efforts because you're not carrying as much fat uh, and weight into that. Um, and 
just don't worry about the scales. Weight is, I would say, a a byproduct of the work that you're doing. As long as your strength and performance is increasing and your scale weight isn't rapidly going up, I would say don't worry about it. Your body adapts to the work that is put through. Going through these cycles of, of rapid weight gain and then rapid fat loss, like I say, just basically end in the same way. So yeah, that was what I had to say on, on how I would shortcut that process. And if we just go back to the process here, I believe that, you know, there's a good 35 pounds of muscle there that I've put on in between those, those stages. I'm, I'm leaner now than I am when I started. Um, and there's a, you know, a 31 pound difference. Um, so a good 35 pounds of, of muscle there roughly. And I think you can do that in about three years if you have the consistency in the training right uh, and you can get a good 80% of that within two years at least 